Now, earlier I spoke via Skype with an expert on nuclear radiation. Janet Sherman is a physician and a former member of the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission. I began by asking her why this leakage was happening at Fukushima. <laughs> You're not going to like my answer, but water runs downhill. And, of course, the ocean is lower than the, uh, the plant. And the, trying to control the plant, the uh, owners have been pouring tons and tons and tons of water to keep the uh, uh, plant under control so that there's not a nuclear reaction and to cool the uh, spent fuel rods. But as you say, if they're pouring these tons and tons of water into the plant, did they not take precautions to stop it flowing into the sea? Well, they've tried. Um, they, they build a, a barrier. They dug down a barrier. And of course, if you've ever had a leak in your home, you know that it's very hard to stop water from r running around any barrier. The latest I've heard is that TEPCO, the, the owner of the Fukushima plant, wants to freeze the barrier. And I have no idea how this could possibly be uh, done. So they're actually going to build a wall of frozen water. Is that what they do? Well, this is what this is the latest thing I've heard that's been proposed. But I can't imagine how it could work because you have to remember that the water they're pouring onto the plant and onto the spent fuel rods heats up because there's that's why they're pouring the water on because it's hot and they need to keep it cool. So how uh, how how are you going to um, if you drop an ice cube into your ice into your warm tea, it's going to melt. And if you pour this hot water over the uh, a frozen barrier, I think it's going to melt. Right. And as I understand it, one of the longer term plans is to repair the walls and the floor of the reactor units themselves. But they've been unable to do that so far. What is preventing them from repairing that? Well, uh, I'm sure the high radiation levels. Um, they, you know, you cannot send workers in there for more than a couple of minutes. Otherwise, they're going to be get high doses of radiation. Uh, we have to remember that even the Chernobyl plant, which, uh, you know, that plant melted down, it's like over 25 years ago, and that plant is still leaking, but not like Fukushima. Right. From what we know uh, about what is going on at the plant right now, is this going to get worse? I hate to say this, but yes, I think it will. And my concern is the, new amount, the enormous amount of radioactive material flowing with the water into the Pacific Ocean. And we know that the um, ocean go, flows northward along Alaska and then down the coast of Canada and the United States. And I think it probably will imperil the entire uh, Pacific Ocean uh, and the, the sea life that's in it. So very quickly, what you're saying here is that this water can actually reach other shores, can reach other countries as well. Oh, absolutely. The, uh, we, we already know that. Right. The radioactive content in this water, does that dissipate or does it just stay in the water all the time? Well, um, both cesium and strontium have a half-life of about 30 years. It takes 10 half-lives for each of these isotopes to uh, decay down to nothing. Uh, we know we contaminate the plankton, and that's eaten by, um, you know, shrimp and oysters and fish and mammals. And as it, most of these move up the food chain, they get uh, concentrated, particularly strontium-90 gets concentrated in the bones. Janet Sherman, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks for joining us. You're very welcome. Thank you.